Traditionally, creating data transformations requires writing code, which limits who can create them. Gaurav Mahotra is here to demo Mapping Data Flow, which is a new visual capability in Azure Data Factory for building code-free data transformations at scale. Today on Azure Friday. Hello, today on Azure Friday, I have Gaurav Mahotra, who's here to show us some great new capabilities that we have with Azure Data Factory. Uh, Gaurav, what do you want to show us today? So, Data Factory is a managed data integration service in Azure, and uh, it has three main value props, right? Uh, so, it has a hybrid pipeline model where you could create complex workflows that can run at scale, and uh, you could run them on demand, on a schedule, on event-based uh, triggering mechanisms. You could use control flow concepts like iterations, conditionals, loops. So you could truly build complex workflows. The second biggest value prop it has is that we provide data movement at scale. So it is truly about hybrid data movement, and it is serverless, where you come in and say that this is my source, this is my destination. We will spin up the infrastructure for you, do the data movement, and you don't have to worry about anything. And in some cases, uh, in most of the cases, like we could give you one gigabyte per second, depending on your source and destination. The third biggest value prop that we have is we allow you to lift and shift SSIS packages. So okay. if you are a customer who has spent decades worth of investment in building those SSIS packages, now we have a way forward with Data Factory where you can lift and shift those to Azure. And in order to support all of these three value props, we have authoring and monitoring tools that are visual, programmatic, uh, whatever you or your organization uh, likes, they can go use that. So what we are saying today is that we are announcing a new capability in Data Factory, which we are calling Mapping Data Flow. And Mapping Data Flow is code-free data transformation at scale. So Data Factory is an ETL service, but the T part is uh, was there, but you have to write code for doing the transformation. So you would either write your code as stored procs running on SQL Azure, SQL DW, or on-prem SQL Server, or you would write your code in notebooks running over Spark. And what we are saying today is that now you could uh, visually build those transformations as part of your data integration workflows in Data Factory as well. And okay. you don't have to write code. We will do the heavy lifting for you where we will take that code, generate the equivalent Spark, and run it over the Spark distribution for you. Well, that sounds intriguing. Do you yes. have something that you can show me? Yes, and here, before I go into the demo, I just want to point out some important uh, aspects of that. Like right? here, what we are focusing on is on building the business logic and the transformation, and we are giving you cloud scale via the Spark execution. And all of this can be done in a code-free manner. So our goal is to for you to visually drag and drop and not write a bunch of lines mm -hmm. of code. So if I were to switch into the demo now, uh, here you can see that uh, I have a particular, uh, like you can go create a blank pipeline. And in this particular pipeline, now in, in our uh, toolbox, we have a data flow activity. So you can drag and drop a data flow activity here. Either you can choose an existing data flow or you could create a new data flow. So let's say for this, I create a, a data flow name, data flow demo, and I say finish. And at that point, I, ha I get a blank canvas for this particular data flow. And so now, data flow is really just that canvas? Yes. Okay. And now I can add different sources. So I can say that for me, the source is my uh, data in my data lake chain 2 mm -hmm. or in my blob storage or in my SQL DW, so I select that, and now I can visually add transformations. Mm -hmm. So I could come in and say that uh, for the data that I have selected, I want to do some select on the columns, then I want to uh, do some uh, sort, and then I have another reference data, and that could again be residing on blob or any other location, and I want to join the data that has been sorted with my reference data, right? So I could come here and say that I want to join it with the source to stream, and then I can continue to do more transformations, right? So you can see that I'm just 
doing visually. I'm just clicking buttons, providing mm -hmm. all of the configuration. And uh, even in the join type, it's giving you a visual reference to, to help you make the right selection. Yes, so we have all the support for transformations in terms of join for outer join, left outer join, right outer join. You want to do a cross join. So all of that is supported. And not only that, right? we support different partitioning schemes as well. So you could mm -hmm. say, just keep the partitioning scheme that I have as is, or I want to put everything in the si single partition, or I want to set a partitioning scheme where you could do round robin, hash partitioning, fixed range, key, totally depends on what you want to use. And again, all of that is visual for you over here, right? So you could define that and uh, you could essentially go uh, run this, you could debug this uh, uh, in real, uh, like just right now, if you want to just uh, say that whether this works or not, you can mm -hmm. go into the debug mode and do that. So I have uh, another workflow that I already created for this particular uh, uh, session where I have a soccer ETL demo and here, uh, I have some data and you can see that I've already turned on the debug mode and when you turn it on, you need to uh, attach a, a, HD, a, a Spark cluster with it. So you need to attach a Databricks uh, cluster, an interactive cluster so that as you are going from step by step, you can see how your data is flowing, how many columns okay. came in, columns went out and all of that information. So here you can see now that uh, I have the, uh, the source settings and in this particular case, I have the schema of the data and you can specify the type, format, you can look at the data previews. So if I were to fetch it right now, it's gonna go fetch this particular data preview and we'll be able to do a sanity check to see mm -hmm. how the, the rows look like. So you can see that this is the raw event data. So it's essentially the raw soccer event data from different teams that have been playing different games. So I can see those previews and then in the next step, what I'm doing is that I'm created, creating a, a com, uh, another column called event type map. So in this case, 22 columns came in and here there are 23 columns because I have, I'm having another column. And here we have full expression support. So we have our own grammar. We, you can write expressions, you could do case statements to say that if my event type, which was a column in the data set that I chose, is zero, then I wanted to call it announcement, or it, if it's an event type one, it's an attempt, so all of that. So I'm using our rich expression language over here to do that. And once I click save and finish, it's all over here. And then in the next one, I'm doing a join against some reference data. So I have some location data, and in this location data, I have the, the type and the name. And in the original data that I'm getting, the event data, I have uh, the, the, the location and I'm joining these two by that column. So you can see in this particular join, I'm doing that, right? Again, it's all visual for right. you. And you can again see that now, uh, because of that join, I'm gonna have an additional column, so 25 columns in total. So we are showcasing all of that as the process is, is, is going on. Then I have a column mapping step, I'm just a column naming step where I'm naming columns to whatever I like. So in this particular case, I'm naming event type map to event type name. And then finally, I'm binning the data, right? So I'm essentially saying that I want to group the data in uh, buckets of 10. So I'm using the end tile function to create those 10 sized buckets. And as again here, like I said, at every step, you can look at data previews to see what's going on. and and you can essentially go click on these columns and we can essentially create graphics for you, basically statistics to say on in which distribution it is following. So in this particular case, if I were to create for event type, you can see the statistics once it pulls that right. how many percentage, uh, what count contributes to what, right? So all of that information is available for you to look visually. And then finally, I'm pushing the data to my DW. So at a very simple level, you can create your transformation. There's a lot of rich operators, things that you can build out the, the uh, pipeline, but you can also click in and do some of the advanced uh, 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 understanding of the data distribution, maybe make some different choices. So this actually supports not just the beginner, but more advanced users as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, right? So 
one, like right now I'm in the debug mode, but once we schedule this, right, let's say we say that run this on a cadence, then in our monitoring interface, you can look at the partitioning information, you can look at skewness, kurtosis, all of that information, advanced concepts we present to you, right. because we have information about each step that you are, that you have in your pipeline. Great. Now you say this is no code. How much code are you really replacing? Yeah. So for this example, right, like I actually have an equivalent uh, Databricks notebook, right? So in this notebook, uh, if I were to show you, uh, this is again the same example that I just showed the you. Same the same transformations, transformation. every single step, yep. the computed columns. Yep, yep, exactly same. So you can see that in this particular case, uh, I first am writing code to get my raw data. Then I'm just took, taking a peek at it. Then I'm specifying the schema, which Data Factory pulled automatically for you. Then I'm extracting the game events. Uh, and then I'm essentially doing all of the transformation, which is joining the data and then column naming. So all of that, you can see that I had to write a bunch of code to do that. Right. But here, you could do all of that visually, yeah. uh, and it compiles down to uh, down to the Spark, and, but we are doing that heavy lifting for you and running it over the Spark distribution. Wow, that's fantastic. Yes. That's fantastic. Yes. yes. Well, what more do you want to show us? So essentially, uh, with this, uh, there are some capabilities that I want to highlight that we are doing with mapping data flow. So here, we are able to handle upsets, deletes automatically for you. We have new partition methods uh, that we've added. We, we support schema drift, right? So let's say you want to come and say that I only care about these two columns and not about anything else. Mm -hmm. Then you can uh, essentially tell us using an expression or bus just by saying that only these two columns and if anything else changes in my data set, do not affect my production workflow, we can do that. Uh, so with the visual code free, you can do upserts. Yes. That's fantastic. Yes, Great. yes, yes. Okay. And then we support file handling, so you can move files after read, write files to file names, all of that is supported. There's a whole new inventory of functions in the grammar that we have uh, exposed, uh, like hash functions for row comparisons, all of that is there. Uh, then we are supporting commonly used ATL patterns. So we are essentially allowing you to do sequence generator, lookup transformation, slowly changing dimensions. All of that is inherently supported with this particular data flow. And not only that, you can see your data lineage, right? As I was showcasing at every step, right. how, how much data is coming in, going out, how much time it took. You can see that entire data lineage, if you will, for your entire data as it is flowing from one transformation to another. And then, uh, like I said, like commonly used ETL patterns, right? SAD type one, type two, all of that is supported with this as well. Wow, that's really great. Yes. That's really great. And as I was mentioning, right, like if once you put, uh, like this was the debug mode where you are, as you are developing, you are doing interactive development and debugging. But once you operationalize this, meaning that if you go in the pipeline and then you put a trigger on top to say that I want to run this, uh, like, I, uh, on, on a cadence, so if you create a new trigger over here, and I say that I want to run this on a schedule, then essentially, once you put that trigger, it will appear in our monitoring uh, canvas over here, and you'll be able to see all your runs uh, uh, for your particular data flow, and then you'll be able to see all of that information in this monitoring interface, right? Great. Like, you can uh, dig onto each step, to, as I was saying, what is the partitioning information? Uh, you can look at uh, how much data came in, how much data came out, how many rows were processed, how much time it took for uh, every uh, transformation that ran. So all of that information is presented to you from this single pane of glass. That's great. That's great. And still getting that visual reference on yes. each step, the success, yes. the, the transformations, and the yes. volume. Yes. Great. Yes. So you can make this part of your uh, pipeline. So mm -hmm. think of this that you have a, a control flow pipeline, uh, like I was showcasing over here. And all these activities could be combined with it, right? So you could have, a, let's say, an Azure function where it is doing something, and then it becomes the output of that goes to this particular data flow. You're doing some transformation on, on that and uh, the output of that can be consumed downstream in different other activities in the pipeline as well. Really great updates. Yes. Where do I go to learn more? Yes, so we are announcing today the limited private preview of this particular uh, capability. 
and uh, you can essentially sign up for that limit to be part of that limited private preview by filling up this form and this form is available through our UX so there is a banner that we have in our uh, user experience which you can click and it will take you to this form so once you fill it out we grant you access to this public preview limited public preview and you can start to use that and we also have a rich set of documentation uh, in which we are working to push it to our, our public documentation that's uh, it, that's available. So you can just go and say aka.ms uh, Azure Dataflow Docs, uh, ADF Dataflow Docs, and then it will take you to our documentation, public documentation, and you can read all about it and get started with it. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was great seeing you again. Yes. Always fun to have you uh, join the show and share all the great updates with Azure Data Factory. Thank you so much. We've been learning all about mapping data flow in Azure Data Factory today on Azure Friday.